Okay, cool. I've started recording. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Shabu. Um, what's your name? My name. Mm -hmm. I grew up in orchards all my life. I went to. In the process of going to Hill Hill High, I left nine because I decided to go to boarding school. Seeing myself in Pretoria was the biggest problem. I wasn't going to finish my matric. Then I went to Nelspreet. That's where I continued my studies, my further studies. So, yeah, in Pumalanga, I've achieved my matric there. I'm an A grade student <laughs> because of Mr. M who owned the school. He's now late. He used to tell us that education is the key. Mostly, uh, he taught us all we needed to know in life, gave us support, and all of this. In the journey of finishing my matric, I now <clears throat> embarked in. I took a gap year and then I came back. I went 2016, I went to. That's when I did my diploma in HR. I completed it. Yeah. Then I went into property. Property, after school. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sales agent. I started learning there. Um, I got my tenants of selling houses there. I qualified for my MQF4 with the EAAB. And then now I'm studying again for my MQF5. My biggest dream next year is after giving birth, I want to be either a conveyancer or a lawyer. That was the biggest dream I had. But the lawyer faculty is into law is I want to study paradigma. That is the biggest dream. Then <clears throat> later last year, this year, was it this year, this year, I opened my own baby company because I grew up in a tender family. But my, my vision is different from tenders. Um, I was raised by my mom and my stepfather. Biologically, my father is still alive. He doesn't care about me, but that is just another thing. You know, my father took care of me when I was still four years, my stepfather, and is now dead. I have achieved so much because of that man. I am who I am today because of him. You know, I used to say if I can surf, uh, surf places and say he's my father, I would be there. He's your dad. He's my dad, actually. My dad is still alive. But the late one, I find it good. He is my dad, you know. I've achieved so much support from him to a point that I I own a lot now. Yeah, gradually. Support that I was so much. I miss him so much. I I used to feel good if he does he didn't leave two years ago. By now all those drug issues I wouldn't be having. But I'm recovered. And I don't think I would go back. You know. My drug issues started my mom doesn't even know about it, but even if she finds out, now it is actually time. My drug issue started when I was dating a guy that I dated. I had, I was working, was new, when I lost everything. You know, the concept in a of I had everything, I had a job, I had, you know, and now everything is tarnishing into thin A. It got to a problem where we used to spend time more, more high, not here, at home. Home I was still staying with my mom. To a point where he said how our people are not sleeping, the influence. When we're sleeping in the car, we're having fun. I was drinking alcohol then. We're having fun when we're sleeping. Try. That's how I started. You know? Not what was it? Bear. Not even crystal, but we call it white. Mm. To an influence that my cousin was doing it, mm -hmm. and I did not know. Mm -hmm. So I started then, then I met up with 
my boyfriend, baby daddy. He was selling too. So you see, I couldn't hustle for it because with my background, I always had an allowance and I still do. How much were you having then? Every day, every month, mm -hmm. allowance 5,000 from my mom. At what age? Now that I started in February. Okay. You know, so it was in a struggle to get it. And now remember, in the last name, man, yeah? and they asked me out, advantage of me buying, I could think. Uh, white <clears throat> doesn't take too much money, like now pay and crystal. The demand is when you're smoking the whole day, the nose will block. You're going to have a withdrawal. Do you know? You won't smoke again because um, your nose are closed. It tells you to sleep. Obviously, they're not going to work anymore. The drugs don't work anymore. They are not even addictive to that point. But mentality and concept, because you're trying to hide all your pain in the drugs, tells you to smoke, 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 smoke until. But what kind of effect does it give? You become hyper. You don't sleep. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, but then... For days and days on end? No, maybe the whole day. If you don't eat in the morning, then what will happen is, um, if you don't drink water, you have fatigue. Fatigue meaning you are very tired, you can collapse any time. And remember now, the white, we call it white, you, you can't eat because it already closed your layer. It closes the, the, the layer, the part where you have to eat, and then you start vomiting food. Do you understand? Hmm. Hmm. That is why. So the, the, if you it, skip it, a meal in the morning, you don't have full meal, and you just start by smoking, you will never eat that day. Hmm. You're always on liquids, sweets, even if you force, gradually. After five minutes, you're going to vomit. Hmm. Okay. And when did you start? When I lost my job, February. Yeah, February. This year? Yeah, this year. Okay. February, March. And you stopped? You stopped um, when you fell pregnant? April. Okay. Yes. Was it easy to stop? Mm, yeah, because it's not addictive. It is the concept of the mind, right? When the mind tells you that you are in stress and you start depending on the drug and you are telling yourself um, ah. when you're smoking you don't see your problems you must remember all your problems go boom. you are happy you're, you talk too much you're entertaining people when it finishes it says go for more now I used to say I have an addictive personality one day my boyfriend told me no no uh, my mom went to the bush. I was staying with him to the bush. Mm. They in Wonder Park. Mm. And they staying there. He said, uh, Nan, you know how I started being a yoga addict? I'm seeing you, you are heading there. I don't want you to have that life. It's either you quit together or you quit. That's how I started dating my boyfriend. Bad as it is, that he's smoking now, but up till today. But he could tell Murray, you don't deserve to go this route. If I was another boyfriend, I was going to teach you how to smoke now. Your frustration that you're carrying in your body is leading you to do drugs. The white now, I feel like it's no more working on me. So you want to hide the concept of stress he told me, do you know how many years I've been smoking all my life? I've been smoking ever since my parents died. I haven't been home for more than 12 years. They don't even know where I am. So I don't want you to learn how to smoke things just because you're hiding in the cluster of your pain. This is how I became, started selling. But what is... What is the biggest thing that's stressing you? Um, that's making you want to escape? 
the minute you, you start having doubts about your life, fear, that you're not making it. Remember, I have always challenged myself to be a very successful person. And when you lose everything that you have started so hard for, and you can't face the reality that I've lost, people know you as a very successful person. Now you are home. You're not doing anything. I once got a question for my friends saying, but no, 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 no. Oh, you see you, you are working. Why don't you have a car? Then I'm hitting you. I have gained so much confidence in my life that I, I need a person to have. I get to the Ukraine bomb, they're small. I've always told myself I'm not living for people. When I started, I started reminding myself my goal when I stopped. Every day I have a goal, you know. I can't be a draggy at the same time my boyfriend being a draggy. But then I didn't even know I'm pregnant. Only found out after three months that I'm pregnant. You know, I have a goal. I have a goal in life. I had a goal. What's going on? Where you, where I lost it is where I forgot about the goal. You know, when I had tribulations, I was staying in my own place. I'm coming back. Home. Home. People know me as this successful person, right? Now you're back home. Remember my father passed on two years ago. Oh. I did not deal with that issue. I still cry even now saying, Daddy, if you were still here. You know? It all hit me so at sorry one. about your dad. <laughs> it's okay. It all hit me at one time. And when this happened, friends came, influenced, I've lost everything. I had to now pack my things and put it in my mom's storage and start again. How do I start again? You know, that's why I'm telling people that when you start something, a drug, you're trying to hide between your feelings and the drug because it makes you forget about your problems. So I'm doing it for fun. But mainly me, when I started, there was influence because of the pain. And then I quit when my boyfriend was still working. Thanks to him, up till today, I was going to be saying I will smoke more. Because now you remember a substance is called a cyber mainly. You tried this one. Yes. But he always said withdraw. You know? That's why when I look at him sometimes I say, people ask me what well, you would you learn your piece? Carry is better because I will do the Ne? As an Elvis, ne? We, still, we still own a dragon person. But merely is because I'm trying to support him on the part where that's what he likes doing. He doesn't have an ID. You know, we're still trying to build that. But I want him to do something to grow himself. He Wake up every day and look forward to doing something yes. with his life. Something that will teach him as it goes, you know? But I'm not happy that I'm still, you know, in this game with him. I wish he had a better life um, because he made me have a better life. If it wasn't for him, by now I'm sure, this pregnancy would be gone because of stress. But if he was a better person to me, you know when you get a boyfriend that smokes these things, it teaches you gradually to move from what you, you don't feel anymore to crystal. Crystal in your brain, what you hear that brain when we're smoking out. But he said, soft, go back to your dream. That is what he told me. The special kind. Yeah, a truly <laughs> blessing. I, I look at him every day and I say, God, if I can get a rehab that can help him become a better person, how he helped me. You know, all you need is support. And you can't go to your mom and say, Mama, I'm smoking drugs. My mom is very supportive, but that one will kill her. You know, it will, it will tarnish her. Thanks to him, his gradual support was, was over the moon. But now I look at how we started a new business, which I'm not proud of. But I get to learn every day about these things, eh? How I still have a dream of a rehabilitation center. 
I didn't have much experience with these things, but approximately two months, three months. But you can actually see that people want to change. They really want to change. So my biggest dream is now going back to school, but at the same time opening a rehabilitation center. That is the dream. Most people, uh, we get stuck with these things because of life, tribulations, problems, family. They will tell you when you go to rehab and when you come back, you'll become nothing. You know, some people, it's parents, what's that bring these kids down. They get the influence from people that are smoking. Well, right, smoking food better. That's how it goes. But I still say thank you to him. Today, I am a mother. Of my hey. first boy, <laughs> and it's a boy. Hey. And yeah, how far are you? Eight months. Oh, wow. In the eight months, I'm clean. Wow. Well so, done. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I don't think I'm going back anymore. I, Please don't. I wouldn't. Please don't. Three months. Ne? If you look at people that are smoking on the street, like him, twelve years, twelve to fifteen. Not even his parents know where he is. His parents, two parents are late. Not even aunties know where he is. Or siblings. Nothing. He has a twin that he doesn't know where he is. And it's a girl. You know? That hinders him every day. I think that's the reason why he doesn't want to quit. So with my baby, you know, it's a blessing in the house. After a tribulation of three months of smoking, now this starts close. Tell me about that experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they do no smoking. We how have, did you get to go to, to to? I went there. How did you end up there? Because of my rape case. Oh. Uh -huh. I've lost control. I was drinking too much. You couldn't control me. I had the. How old were you? When I got raped, it was I was sixteen, I think, sixteen, seventeen. Then my father decided a lot of the anger issues. I didn't steal at home, I didn't. Because of, you know, you have an allowance. Mm. I used to drink alcohol, go to school, drunk, fight a lot, you know. I was a lunatic, so my father decided not. She must go there and get church support. It did help, actually. Is it? How long were you there for? I didn't even stay long. Three, four months? Mm -hmm. Yes. You were chained as well? No. Or you were not chained, or they only chained people who do drugs? No, no, no. People that are very aggressive, that don't want to change. Do you think, oh, you say it helped you a lot. Very. Did you learn anything new while you were there? Uh, spiritually, yes. Uh, because it's based on church. Mm -hmm. um, how to do your things well. You know, you wake up in the morning, go to for prayers three times a day. And then, remember now, they're not asking you, it's force. If they don't see you, they come out the out of the room. You know? And it's a learning curve. And then your, your, these different churches, right? Mabopanis, Changuve. There's a month, Hebron. maybe March, yes, Hebron. March, all of you all get together, know each other, it's singing, it's praising God for, now, some people relapse because they want to go home. They see their friends passing there. Why they chain them? They will chain you for a week when you come. But the next week, they are out on chain. Why is because you can't handle it you want to go out. So the minute they see you, oh, only violent, you want to run out. Remember, you stay in there for four months out. It's worse. The minute you get the opportunity out of the gate, they will chain you back. And this time it's short steps. Did you see other people struggling? Yeah, Nelp is a uh, plain thing. Because bar roller. They have to fasten you on um, a pillar. And you sit on the pillar the whole yes. day. And you're crying, you're vomiting. The mucuses come out. And then after a week you start gradually, you know, adapting. But now remember it's in the head. Yeah? If you can't turn in your head, there's no way when you're going. The main thing is the head and letting go of what you're facing. 
And did you get help for your? Did you get psych psychiatric assist uh, help with dealing with some of like that I couldn't thing? talk to a psych. Why? Because I always you remember when you have anger, you ask the person, you tell me your your problems, I'll tell you mine. That is how, what I was doing. My biggest supporter was my mom and my father. That's how I got out of everything. Like, you know, mainly my mom was the big, biggest. Big ups to mom. <laughs> my mom is, yo, is, she's a pillar. She used to tell me, Nana, you must remember one thing. You're going through a tribulation that God says, if there's a challenge that I will give you, I give you challenges that will never be future. How many have you faced and then you've passed now this one? And it actually grew me like every day. That's why I love for my mom. Are you the only child? No, I have my sister mm -hmm. and my two siblings. Is it, the, is it a, an older sister? Older. How old are you? 28, she's 40. Okay. Mm. And then your two younger siblings, how old are they? No, no, my sister's kids. Oh! <laughs> so it's, so it's just you and your sister. So this one is a new grandson. Ah, okay. <laughs> the family is growing. It's growing. And this is the last, I think. <laughs> so what do you think you'll be three to six Yo, my months from is... now? Six months from now, mm -hmm. I'm actually planning on starting my life next year. Mm -hmm. And now remember now, I have to give birth in December. So three months will be with the baby. Mm -hmm. And after that, it will be with Granny. Mm -hmm. My needs to grow big. I have living plans in subdivision. This one needs to do its own work, you know. I believe in growth. Uh, I've always said, I have a dream of growing our black South Africa. Because if you look at now our category in South Africa is drugs mostly. Especially the area that we're sitting in. You know, I believe in growth very much. I want black youth to get education. I look at kids that are very homeless but want to go to school. That is my biggest dream to pay subsidies for them you know, get them homes, get them jobs in our company. I believe in talent, different talent. I believe in learning. Learning is a new everyday code, you know. That is my biggest dream. That is me, sister. I felt that my sister had a dream. She still has a dream. So I combined those things into being. I believe in every different challenge. I'm not saying I'm going to be making money, a lot of money. But you remember, a company is making a lot of money. But I want to share it with my our South Africa, the day, the South Africa of tomorrow. So when they look back and they say, you know, we got courage from a woman that had so much strength in building us. It is not about the money now. It is about how they see themselves after 10 years. And how do they feel when they own houses and subsidies? Especially these ones that are smoking on the street. It's not like they don't have homes, they do, actually. But when they go back to their homes and they face all those capitalist words, like, you're never going to be anything in life. Those are the ones that I want to grow, you understand? What do you think makes a person leave rehab today? They get home, they are welcomed. Mm. They disappear and they go smoke again, especially Banyangpe. <laughs> Merely it's not the support, the root of what caused them to smoke. There's always a root. You know, something that is hindering him every day. You know, even if he goes to rehab, he's, it's not because he's trying to impress you guys that I, am, I went to rehab or he, there is something that started. You remember I said, you hide in between the drugs because of what? Something that started like rape or, you know, you need to start accepting self introspection on how it happened, how, you know, you don't really need to be here. Then you start, you move. But then as a, as a family member of somebody who's um, 
smoking. Who's smoking? Mm -hmm. How then do I know how to best support them? Because I think at the peak of addiction, mm -hmm. eh, our family members just become a burden. You know, you because hear a mother. Words. Remember this person is clustered, he can't think, he's always high. The only time is when they finish sm uh, smoking and sleep, then poop -poo, you're awake. Now, it comes back. Don't think it's gone for the day. It comes back, okay, my father passed on, my mother passed on, I am nothing. Someone, my family member now took us in, keeps on saying I stole, even when I didn't steal. Mm. Yeah, that one brings all those memories back. If my mother was, but the person needs to now accept that it is in the past and move on. It is the smallest things that hinder their success. Self introspection of what led you to smoking and how do you face the problem? You know, it's not friends, it's not. Remember, a friend can't put a gun to him and say, Please, unless there's a gun. But there's always something that leads him to go into buy and he can't face that thing. He needs to overcome that thing that is in the heart. So it's a, it's a personal, personal, it's a personal issue. thing. Yes. And if you see yourself going over 12 years of age smoking that, it is too personal. Then it means you're not willing to accept. Denial is the reason. Let's put it like that. You're denying. You know, but then, you wish if it could happen like this, mm -hmm. not like what you're facing now. Remember, even a funeral goes through to a point that when you wake up now, you don't want to smoke, but you're feeling that pain. It says, ah, when I'm smoked, ah, there's no pain. You know, they like to make you like, ah, you're the boss. You don't feel the pain. When the drug goes out, now you feel the pain. Okay, now you go smoke. And when you don't have money for it, you start stealing. You remember all those words that said, ah, when are you never going to make it enough? That's what leads to it. There's always a main, main root. And what about, like, I've interviewed so many people who are in addiction, right? Mm -hmm. And these people that I've interviewed, um, actually all of them, know where to go and for help when doctors are available at this place mm. they are homeless but they are they're not really sleeping on the streets on the side of the streets they've got their mm. like small and houses here and there and they know where to get help but they're not willing to to do that. it's only i think out of 20 people i've interviewed there's one person that has decided that they are going to go to cross up Mm -hmm. and attend the courses, take the methadone mm -hmm. and go there and just take time, half a day and go take a shower, have a healthy meal, talk to a counsellor, talk to peers mm -hmm. and attend the meetings. As I said, I said denial. You know, I think I once smoked Nyobe. Yeah. You know, when I think back, ne? so we mm -hmm. went to, do you remember Raga Night? You too, yeah. You don't know Raga Nights in Oh Joburg. yeah, it's Raga We went to Raga Nights with friends, right? Mm -hmm. And when we got there, like the people, and then my friend, when I went there, she's like, don't smoke anybody else's joint. Yes, yes. I don't know. I was just too excited. Then I smoked joint there, this guy, I think his name mm. was Motel. And I smoked joint there, Motel. Yes. Hey, dude, I went to the bathroom. And then everything, like. You know? Yes. Like, I, I was. I was feeling hot and cold at the same time. I was sitting on the floor and I was mm. hearing people. Uh, like when she was calling me, I felt like it was my voice. Yes. Like it was my voice calling no, me. No. I thought you were not used to it. No, but we, had, we were smoking weed, but his yeah, was just... Yeah, because you remember drugs have... Different ADHD. levels. So uh, you got the drug. There was no drug. Now it makes you very sleepy. Really? You sleep. He sleeps a lot, actually. Mm. Then he wakes up. That talks to you then sleep again. So it's not that. So what do you think a parent that has a child that's addicted to Nyope needs to do in order to help this child? Some pa parents listen to a lot of parents that their kids don't smoke. It starts there. Needs to gradually support the child. Like put in fully. Know that today 
He might just want to wake up, wake up at home, he will sleep the whole week and not smoke it. Man, needs to understand when the child is feeling pain, needs to understand when the child is feeling happy. The words that they use on them are not proper. You say you're supporting your child. Needs to have room for disappointment. Okay, last week he didn't smoke the whole week and then now he's doing that. Merely it supports finding out what is injuring him. Because in the rehabilitation centers, they give them method until they come out. There's no psych it is serious. That you, you, you actually explain how you were hindered, how you got raped, or how you lost. You know? Needs to find out how it started. Judgmental things are not the ones you need to be using. Especially, I have a friend who just went to rehab of recent. But he's back on Chris Norman because of the family. The words, not the mother. The mother now neglected the child and he said, man, can not have you man in money? I'm here now. I'm kind of useless. I'm a COVID. I'm a COVID. The mother stays in Ocho to Mr. Sushum. Trying to remove her from the friends, maybe Nana no do too. When she got the, uh, uh, he got the, my name was I'm calling you useless. You know. But if the mother took the child in and said to the child, I don't think the child a week after rehabilitation center. But do you have addicts that have you met an addict that takes accountability to say, This is how I messed up? They do talk a lot, eh? It's how you approach them. They do talk a lot, cry a lot. I have one that cries every day that uh, I was working properly. And what hindered me was the words of my family. When I lost my parents, I was staying with them. You know, how we treat kids differently. It's your kids. Can you buy an ice cream for this one? This one doesn't. He embarked on going into the street now trying to find closure on the street. What happens? Closure leads to drugs. Drugs. You smoke this one, it's not better. You smoke that one, you end up in there. That's how you face it. A lot, I was having one who was crying and still saying, I want to go back to work even though when I'm smoking. I want someone who will actually support me and does join me that I want to be. And you can actually see his seriousness because his hair was big and you know, he had he has a lot of beautiful clothes, but he stays in one part of the bush. You know, he washed all his clothes, he's cut his hair, he looks nice. He's going for an interview and he said to me, please help me get my CV. Because I can't do it alone. That's how they are willing to change. I think they need more support, more gradual support. Something to do every day, like a job. Most of the things that hinder our society is um, to be jobless at that situation, you know? But they always find money to, to buy. Because they might steal your phone. That's what leads it to it. I'm not working. I have to now think of a plan to smoke. But if our South Africa was more lenient, I think if our um, once this constitution was more linear, they would let them boss and have jobs. Go to the spa, help them. We should have a base where they take their CVs. If they're serious though, you know, and where they're keeping them for rehab or maybe helping them with certain <coughs> food or a person, a land basically where they can build the structure keep them there, like America. America, recovering addicts, there's a place where they keep them, all of them. They look for jobs for them. Like an it's in the system? Yes, in the system. We are there. But is there any help for addicts in Pichano? No, not around. Not around. We don't. Because I know the Sanka, but it's in... Um, Sanka now, these people... No, in, but it's in Toshanguve, mm -hmm. the one that's... They can still go through, because Opala Sanka sometimes keeps you there for six weeks and then they bring you back home. No, but the Toshanguve one is an outpatient. 
outpatient really coming back home. Every day you, you That's attend. That's why they they fuck it up. Anything else? Anything else you want to talk to me about? No, she's not. We're still <laughs> going to have these discussions. All of them. I'm going to come here often and I'm going to come here to get a baby so you can sleep. <laughs> sleep this one. Uh, no, so you it. can sleep. So I'll hold baby. <laughs> then you can get a nap or two. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so, you so much. much.